Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to head a little bit north this time towards the Stockholm area. Go out a little bit to the west of there where you'll find a town called Eskilstuna. And for this one we're returning to a brewery who I think are very good in terms of the authenticity of all the different beers that they do. These guys like to brew lots of different traditional styles of beer which is great. So for this review then we are going to return to Eskilstuna Ulk and we're having a look at the 13 today which is the beer they've brewed to celebrate their 13th anniversary of existence. This one is a Weizenbock and it comes in at 9.5% ABV so for that style it's a little bit of a beast. Normally Weizenbocks if I remember correctly like for example the Schneiderweiss ones they are usually around 8% I think 8.2% maybe. Um, so this one is a little bit heavier than that so I'm curious to see how it turns out in that regard but you know um, this brewery they brew a lot of different German styles of beer and um, a lot of Belgian beers actually as well I mean over the last year or so from these guys I've had uh, the 12 which was a Scotch ale, I've had the Belgian Blonde um, I had the Quadrupel, I've had the Yulebock, and I'm sure there was another one that I reviewed from them in there at some point as well but I've, as I say I've always been impressed with the authenticity of the different styles of beers that these guys produced. I mean, out of all of the ones I've reviewed, the only nitpick that I ever had was that they shouldn't have filtered their uh, their quadrupel. So, I mean, this is a brewery, if you like trying um, more traditional styles of beer, German and Belgian things, then I really recommend that you check these guys out. Their bottles are available to order throughout the whole of Sweden, as far as I can gather. But really cool to try the 13th anniversary beer from them as well, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it. And come to think of it, I don't think I've reviewed uh, Swedish brewed Weizenbock yet yeah, actually maybe maybe just one or two but I think I've not had that many Weizen beers of any description from Sweden yet so that's something I definitely need to have a little bit more of a look at I'd need to review some more Weizens on the channel I think that's a style that's been lacking over the last little while but like I say curious to see how it turns out and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well so um, yeah as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Eskils to Nautil Coulter before. This must be review number six or seven, something like that. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Eskilstuna Ulkultur then, on to my brewery notes. So Eskilstuna Ulkultur was founded by the home brewers Arto Ukura, Kalko Lakkanen, Thomas Humbla, Bosse Gustafsson and Anders Olsen and these guys apparently met at the Swedish Home Brewing Championships and they decided that together they wanted to give Eskilstuna a brewery once again but together they managed to rent a building in the town centre and they established a beer bar there which was opened at Christmas in 2003 but once the bar began to do really well they thought they should begin to brew for themselves and so in 2006 they officially founded Eskilstuna Ulkultur but in 2008 they moved to a larger premises because they outgrew their original brewery and uh, they were helped by an army of volunteers to get the new building kind of up and running. So they received their brewing equipment from China in September of 2008 and they've continued to expand their brewing capacity and range of beers ever since then. In 2018 they produced around 130,000 litres of beer per year. I wasn't able to find a figure for 2019 yet um, but for a long time it was Anders Olsen who was the main brewer but they now have somebody new in. They've got a new brew team in there now and I think Anders is taking care of the business side of things as well and uh, Arto Ukura is still quite heavily involved in the business side of the company as well. I think the other guys are more kind of like silent partners basically these days and help out a little bit um, but I wasn't able to find too much information on what the other guys currently do. So mainly it's Anders Olsen and Arto Ukura who are running the uh, the Eskilstuna Ulkultur company these days from what I understand. But like I say, the, th the thing I would praise this brewery on is the authenticity of all the different beer styles that they do. They're very, very good at that in my opinion. So um, yeah, if you like Belgian beer, if you like German beer and you know Scotch ales and stuff like this, then this is a brewery that you definitely want to keep an eye on. They seem to release a new beer 
every couple of months through the local and small sect uh, assortment in Seastown Bulaga, which is great. It's great since uh, they've started making that every month rather than every three months. Breweries can get more beers out there and things, which is great. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Eskilstun at Ulkulter for the moment. The restaurant and things, the restaurant bar is open there. Hopefully I can get up there at some point and film a little out and about video. It would definitely be cool to do a, a sort of meet the brewer, meet the owner type thing with Anders Olsen. He's, you know, messaged me a few times and things through uh, Facebook and stuff like that. So that's something that I hope we can figure out at some point in the future. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. As always, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different things that these guys have done. They tend to, on Untapped, a lot of the, some of the beers that they release every year, people seem to have made new pages for each vintage and things like that. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we go. So as you can see, the artwork on this one is actually very similar to the 12 Scotch Ale that I reviewed for you a while back. I don't know, that's maybe about six months or so since I reviewed that beer. But yeah, the artwork on this one is very, very similar to that. So yeah, basically they do have a similar style of artwork that they release um, their anniversary beers in. You can see a plain bottle cap on this one. Um, it says on the back here, Eskilstun Ökultur Fira Treton or some brewery. So they've been 13 years as a brewery. Um, the oops, uh, Upmerksama Vimed Brüge and Weizenbock. So to celebrate this, we brew a Weizenbock. Go with English now. Um, but yeah, um, so basically what it's saying here, uh, without going into too much more detail on it, is that it says, um, it talks about the roots of uh, the Bock style of beer and the Weizenbock being um, German. So the, if I remember correctly, the Bock beers were from a little town called Einbeck, which is almost right in the middle of Germany. I think it might be, it's one of the Saxonies that that's in. Um, basically, these beers made it down to Munich, and I think they were called, they, they used to make fun, uh, they were called Becks, but then they used to make fun of that uh, in Munich because of the dialect from Saxon, then they became known as the Bock beers, and then, of course, the word uh, for goat in Germany, in Old German, I think, is Bock, and that's why you see a lot of them have the uh, the Bock on it here. But it just says here, yeah, basically, um, Bock uh, has its roots in uh, in Germany, and the Weizenbock is a sort of crafty variant of uh, of German wheat beer. So the aroma of this one is banana and slightly spicy, um, and it's got a nice malty tone of chocolate and burnt sugar. So Eskilstuna 13 um, can be aged, or it can, and then if, it, if you do that, it will develop flavours of plums, raisins, and molasses. Um, so yeah, interesting one this. I'm curious to see if you hold this beer up to the light, it does look a little bit darker, but yeah, at 9.5%, this one is a little bit of a monster when it comes to uh, to a Weizenbock, you know, these uh, you know these beers, like I say, are normally around eight percent. I'm sure the Schneiderweiss Aventinus, which is you know one of the pinnacle uh, examples of the style, I'm sure that's eight point two percent. So this one is a little bit of a monster. But when you open this one up, you do get some lovely red fruity notes out of this. So yeah, though this is really interesting. This is definitely one of the darker Weizen box that I've come across, I have to say. Um, this one looks like it could be a more kind of dunkler uh, Weizen box. That's really interesting. That's almost the same colour as like an English Old Ale or something like that. That's really interesting. So if we hold this beer up to the light, it actually comes across as... Um, as being very ruby and you know sort of chestnutty in terms of its colour. The Weizen box that I've come across in recent times have been a lot brighter than this, you know, m more along the lines of a wheat beer. A Bockel, basically, or a Bock beer rather, is more along the lines of like a very strong lager with a bit more caramelly presence and things like that. They're usually like one, one and a half percent higher than the Hellas and things like that. If I remember rightly, they tend to be around sort of six percent alcohol and things like that. Most German beers tend to be like 4.8 to 5.5. Um, so yeah, this one, um, this this is unusual. As I say, the colour of this one, it is more like a Doppelbock, but it, you can definitely smell the, um, the wheat in it. And this is one thing I've found. There's a lot of breweries in Sweden who produce a Doppelbock, but it's more like a very strong Maibock. Um, so there seems to be a little bit of ambiguity about what these styles actually are. And this is kind of reflected in this a little bit, but I mean, as long as it's going to be a, a good looking beer, or a good tasting beer, I should say, 
poo. It's, it's not such a big deal. Um, but yeah, as I say, in terms of colour, this one's a lovely, if you put the light through this, this is a lovely kind of dark ruby, maybe rosewood is a good descriptor of the colour of this. You could see when we poured it, there was a very thin layer of a foamy kind of fawn coloured head on this. That's just faded away to be a very thin foamy layer. And I mean, at 9.5%, you are going to struggle to hold on to the head of this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that thin foamy layer there. But I mean, overall, this one looks really nice. As I say, the surprising thing about this one is the colour of it, because usually a Weizenbock um, you know, they do have a little bit more darkness to them, but they're not, in my experience, they're not usually this kind of more doppelbock um, colour, if you like. So that's an interesting point to make about this one. Definitely a lot darker than I was expecting in terms of colour. So let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. I'll tell you something. It's a beautiful aroma on this beer, though. Um, straight away with this one. Lots of red fruit coming out, definitely some sort of figgy notes, black currants, um, you know, yeah, fig, it, it's definitely got that sort of datey, pruney kind of thing to it as well. It's got a lovely sort of candied, red fruity quality to it. Yeah, figs, candied strawberries, raisins. So, yeah, it's got a little bit of that sharper raisiny note to it, but I'd say it's more kind of datey and pruney and stuff like that, which is, um, which is great. I really like how this um, how this goes together. I mean, this is an awesome smelling beer, I have to say. Um, the fruitiness on that is lovely. In terms of hoppiness, I mean, um, any Weizen beer is not going to be the most hoppy of beers. <clears throat> but there's a little bit of grassiness in this one, a wee touch of floral character and some earthy notes. You know, it's typical sort of Hallertau, Titnang or Noble Hop type aroma you're getting off of this. Um, but really, this one reminds me a lot of like a quadruple or something like that, I have to say. You know, it, um, it is, this one seems to be as if it's been brewed more in the style of like a Doppelbock, for example, the Assambock or the Weinstefaner, uh, Corbinian or, you know, Eyinger Celebrator is the other one. It seems to be a little bit more like that, but it's got wheat added into the malt base. That's how this one kind of strikes me, whereas a Weizenbock that I, like for example, Aventinus, normally I would think, that is, um, you know, it's that's more. It is more kind of wheat based, but with a little bit more kind of caramelly malt and things in it. So they've taken a completely different approach with this one, I think. So, yeah, um, underneath that, you can definitely smell some of the white bready wheaty notes. It's got an element of brown bread to it as well, um, and it's got some lovely brown sugars. Um, you know, it comes across as quite sweet with the brown sugars. They're also quite toasty, I have to say. Like, it's a sweet caramel with a toasted element to it. There's maybe a little hint of biscuit to it, but you get the kind of, you do get that sort of banana, um, clovey type note in there as well, mixing in with the bread. But to me, the brown sugars and the red fruits are probably the most prominent things in the aroma there. But it's the, the wheat and the sort of, uh, clovey spice, they kind of sit in the background a little bit. So I mean overall this is a really really interesting smelling beer this one. Um, I get the feeling from the aroma and the appearance of this beer that this is one that's it's more creative perhaps. I don't think this is one of the ones that's going to be um, completely authentic if that makes sense. Um, this one, I've never seen a Weizenbock that's this colour and it really does smell a little bit more like um, like for example a Belgian Quad Rupel or something but it does have some of the kind of wheat beer elements to it. So I think this one will be really quite interesting and this is a very capable brewery so let's just see how we get on with this one then. This one is the 13th um, brewed for the 13th anniversary of Eskiston at Oakleter coming in at 9.5% um, a Weizenbock apparently but yeah we'll see how we get on with that. Let's taste it. Slange, skull, cheers. Yeah, I'm going to say straight away, that's a lovely beer, but I wouldn't expect anything less from this brewery. I mean, as I was saying, that this beer, in some ways, it sort of contradicts all the stuff that I'd said about Eskils Tuna at the start of the video. Um, you know, I said they're very good when it comes to, like, you know, um, I really would, it's always about the authenticity of the beers for me. This one is, a it doesn't really fit into that, um sort of um, category if you like. This one strikes me as being a little bit more 
creative. Um, it's not the, This isn't like any Weizenbock that I've had before. I'll say that straight away. But the main question should be, is it a good beer? And it is really quite nice, actually. So, you know, thumbs up to... Um, to Eskilstone at Ulkulter for this one. It's cool to see them you know, doing something a little bit different actually too. But you know it backs up the statement I made that they're not scared to try different styles and things so yeah. Um, this beer, I really like what they've done with it. It's difficult to place exactly what style it is. Um, it's not like any Weizenbock that I've had before. It is more along the lines of quite a strong German Doppelbock or a quadruple, and the thing that probably gives it the impression of, or gives me the impression of it being a quadruple, is the fact that it has that kind of wheaty, thicker malt base to it. Um, but like I say, I like this. I wouldn't hesitate to drink that again. It's definitely a sipper. It's not a beer you're going to session by any means. But I really like how this one um, kind of comes across. I didn't expect it to be anywhere near as dark and brown sugary as it is, but you know, they're very good at that. I mean, we saw from the Quadrupel, they're very good when it comes to these high strength, big brown sugary beers. So, yeah, let's try and break this down a little bit then. So, middle of your palate, you can feel that nice, smooth kind of pale malty and white bready wheaty quality there, that sits in the middle of the palate. As you kind of advance further into the flavour, you get more sort of brown bready elements out of it. Um, and you can feel there is a little bit of that clovey spice. As the centre of your palate dries out a little bit, you get more of that kind of clovey spice coming out of this one, which is nice. Um, yeah. Um, it really sweetens up the more that you drink of it as well, but you can feel towards the back of the palate some of that nice kind of clovey. It really gives the beer just a little bit of um, complexity as well. But as you move further forward um, on the palate, um, you start to get more of the brown sugars out of this one. It's got a lovely um, kind of caramelly sweetness to it. It is a little bit toasted and you can feel that the sugars are a little bit more kind of caramelised as well. So it really does have quite a few... Um, Doppelbock elements, and we're talking Doppelbock along the lines of the um, the Eyinger Celebrator and things like this. Um, it's it really it is more like um, when they say Weizenbock, you know, um, it's, this one is more like a Weizen Doppelbock to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, it's got a bit of the, the wheat beer element, but this one, if we're talking about where it is on the spectrum between Weizen, uh, so a sort of Weizen beer and a Doppelbock, it really is probably more over here, it is more like a Doppelbock this one, but it's, you know, we can debate about the styles, the main question is whether it's good, and I have to say it is a pretty damn beautiful beer, so again, thumbs up to uh, to Eskilstuna for this, they do seem to pull off some really nice uh, beers for their anniversary things, the Scotch Ale for the number 12 was great as well, um, But yeah, that, that malt base is really nice. As you move out from the centre of the palate, it becomes a little bit more biscuity and things too, which is um, which is quite nice. I like that about this one. But the, the way that the caramelised sugars, they've obviously, you know, they've also become obviously become very, very syrupy in the boil. This one will have probably like a three hour boil or something, I would think, with going by the colour of it. Um, it, it, they've agulated, you know, coagulated really quite nicely and it gives you this lovely syrupy feel in the centre of the palate too. The thing you don't really get out of this one is the kind of bubble gummy notes that you can sometimes get from a Weizen, but that's it's not a bad thing. And the wheat, I think, really comes out in this one the further you go into the aftertaste, but you've also got these lovely doppelbocky brown sugars um, coming out in this one too. It's, it's lovely. The malt base in this one really is very nice. You'll notice there's a few kind of woody undertones to this beer as well, the further that you go into the aftertaste also. Um, but that's really nice. Um, I'm guessing that probably the hops they've used in this one will be like Northern Brewer, for example, um, and those are very popular to get red fruity notes. I mean, those are used often in Doppelbox and I believe Dunkel's as well. In, uh, in Germany because they give you the lovely red fruity notes. So at the back corners of the palate you've got that little bit of smooth German noble earthiness 
that comes out of the beer. Um, it smoothens out a little bit, you get some nice kind of floral notes and as you go around the front curve of the palate it's a little bit lighter and more um, and more grassy, you know, typical German noble notes. And then behind the front curve of the tongue you've got that lovely oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. So yeah, on the fruity side of things then, there is a little bit of a kind of raisiny, plummy quality to this one when you first take it. It's got a little bit of that sharpness, but then really, very quickly, it evolves to be more sort of smooth and figgy over the, the front of the palate. And then further into the aftertaste, you'll start to get little notes of like um, blueberries, maybe not, blue, blueberries are a bit too sharp, I think. Maybe more like blackberries, blackcurrants and things like that. Um, so that's, it's really interesting that, and the things that really linger into the taste, like I say, you've got some of the wheaty elements there from the back of the palate, and then as you move further forward, it's got more of the kind of doppelbocky brown sugary notes, and then the juicy fruits in front of that, and some of the smoothness of the hops on the edge of the palate too just linger there as well. So, yeah, I mean, this is a really, really interesting beer. Um, I can't think of a German a German brewed Weizenbock I've had that is quite like this one. Um, usually if it's the, the they always tend to lean one way though. The Weizenbock it can either be really really wheaty leaning um, or they can be a little bit more Doppelbock leaning. And this is definitely one that leans towards the Doppelbock end of the spectrum. It is This beer, to, in my opinion, it is a little bit more like a, a Doppelbock with a bit of wheat put into it than it is like um, like a Weizenbock, if that makes sense. But the main question, as I said, is whether it's a good beer, and I think it's it's beautiful, actually. I mean, this is, this could be the best one I've had from them so far, actually, but, you know, the Scotch Ale might run it close, but then again, I'm a little bit biased in that regard. Um, it's a beautiful beer, this one. A really interesting creation, this. Um, and you know, give this a go if you get the chance. I don't know how many bottles of this there are in Slice Nimble Agate, but it's definitely worth uh, worth trying if you get the chance. And it's another can it's another very good example actually of Eskil's Tuna Eskil Tuna Ulkulter's more traditional style of brewing actually. It'd be very interesting to go up to these guys and learn how to brew some of these different styles actually, because they, they're very, very good at it in my opinion. Um in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, that's the last thing we need to do. Um This one, I'd say, is um, it's kind of at the top end of mid-bodied. Carbonation is very smooth. It's got an element of wetness to the mouthfeel. It's also got a little bit of an oily quality. Um, you've not got much in the way of IBUs to this beer. I'd be surprised if you've got 20 IBUs out of this, to be honest. Um, but the malt base is really nice and smooth. A good bit of oily brown sugar. And you've got some nice kind of red fruity notes to this one. The fruitiness is quite juicy, but at the same time, there's an element of oiliness to it as well. But a really interesting beer, this one. One that's made me think a little bit. Um, it's got authentic elements, I think, both of a, a, a Doppelbock and it's got a little bit of a wheaty element to it as well. So in some ways, you might think this one is a little bit like a quadruple in some ways too, because the wheat almost gives the same effects as the Belgian yeasts in some ways might. Um, so yeah, an interesting beer this one, very nice for their 13th anniversary and I'm glad that I was able to review this one for you. I guess maybe this isn't one of the more authentic ones that you're going to come across from uh, from Estlisuna, but you know, regardless, it's a very, very good beer and uh, I did like this one, so thumbs up to them once again and happy 13th anniversary. I'm sure you'll see more beer reviews uh, on the channel from these guys over the coming year because I like trying different styles from them. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This is the 13th a 9.5% Weizenbock, albeit a little bit more like a Doppelbock or Quadrupel in my opinion, but regardless, a beautiful beer to celebrate the 13th anniversary of Eskilstuna Ulkulta. Awesome stuff. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Eskilstuna Ulkulta as well. And I'm sure I'll return to these guys at some point fairly soon. Make sure you check out my social media and uh, hopefully... I can get to Eskilstuna at some point and film my little out and about video at their bar. Till the next time, Slange just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slange, Skull, Kampai, cheers. Make sure you check out Eskilstuna Old Culture.